Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library. And today I have a great guest on it. And, you know, before the interview started, we were talking about something that I think is very vital for every business is being able to tell the story and explain what you do. So I was excited when I saw on LinkedIn that, you know, he's in the space of business optimization. And when I was like, you know, Schooling Mitchell is a business we need to have on the show. So I want to welcome to the show, Stephen Stark. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Terrell. I'm excited to be here today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, before we jump into, you know, what is Schooly Mitchell and the types of services, you know, what's kind of your, your background before you started Schooly Mitchell? My background, was, I was practically raised, you know, from the time I was 18, I worked in the insurance industry. I worked for the, the biggest property and casualty insurer in, in the state. I started off working for one of their agents, you know, in my hometown, you know, I, I went to work in the office of an agent. And then after so many years, a few years of doing that, I actually went to work for the company itself. So my background's actually um, in insurance. And uh, I, I did a, a few different things throughout the years. But when I, at the time I left the company, I was actually a trainer. I trained insurance, our, our new insurance agents that we were preparing to go up and open up offices in their respective cities. Gotcha, gotcha. Now insurance becomes a, a I guess a, a field that it covers a, a lot of aspects. You go from, like I said, property to health and dental oh, yeah. vision. So what aspect, was there a specific aspect of insurance that you specialize in when you were training? I, I, I mostly focused on, I worked in the subsidiary, it was State Farm was the company and I worked in their life and health insurance subsidiary. Um, after I left State Farm though, I still was in the realm of insurance. I actually developed a, as a trainer, you know, that was my background insurance and I trained people, worked with them, taught them. I ended up developing some of my own online insurance courses and that's a business I've had for 13 years and I still have, it's called pre-licensing. And basically in the world of insurance in most states, if you wanna get a license to sell insurance, uh, and it's the same thing like for real estate, and, you know, you have to take a course and then you go and take and pass your state exam, right? And then you get your license. Well, I own some insurance courses that prepare wannabe agents to go and pass their life and health insurance licensing exams or their property and casualty licensing exams specific, in my case, it's specifically for the state of California, but uh, California is a big state. So it keeps me, keeps me a little bit busy here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty big state to cover. <laughs> it is, it, it, which I'm very happy about from a business perspective. It's great for business. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I mean, the, I the, guess... bigger the, the bigger the state, the more, the more people that, you know, buy the course, right? <laughs> <laughs> Also, so I mean, with the background in insurance and, and you know, with the, the training program, I mean, which it, it sounds like it, it is a, a great resource for people that are pursuing that path, you know, what really started to, to pique your interest or what brought about your interest for Schooly Mitchell? Okay, so after, you know, when I first started my, my business, I used to teach my, my insurance pre-licensing courses, you know, I had an office. People came in and I taught in person. Well, you know, then the, you know, the internet came about <laughs> and, you know, so many things are going online. So at some point I thought, you know, it, it takes a lot of energy to fill up a classroom with bodies, right? You've got to market, you've got to pull them in, you know, and people are only going to drive so far to come to your class because, you know, somebody else has a similar business down the road and they're going to go to whatever's closest. And I, I thought, you know what? Uh, the the rules had changed to where California said, okay, you know, these courses can be made available online. So I said, fine, I'm done with the overhead of having an office and the marketing I have to do because I can only reach a small geographic area. I knew if I could go online that all of a sudden the entire state of California became open to me as far as getting people it's online right okay so um i developed uh I, I i shut down the the classroom live classroom and i basically put everything online and that's what i've been doing now for 13 years is i have an online course and the beauty of it is is yeah there's a lot of work and energy that goes in developing the courses um 
up front, you know, and, and getting them up and launched. But once they're launched and going, I mean, people go online, buy your course, and, you know, you don't have any interaction with them, really. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a great business, you know, selling courses online. And, uh, and so that's what I've been doing. And the beauty of, uh, I think, where you're headed is, how did I end up getting where I am today is because I, I, I you know, I have this course that basically kind of just runs itself, sells itself, the money just rolls in. And uh, I, I was getting bored. I thought, well, I'm not old enough to be, you know, semi-retired. <laughs> um, and so I was a little bit bored. And one day I had a discussion with, with this guy that I knew, didn't really know, but I had been introduced to him. Um, he was an accountant. And he was talking to me about one of his clients and how he had introduced his clients to somebody that does what I do now, who a cost reduction consultant. And he told me about all the money that, you know, this cost reduction consultant was going to be able to save this person in their business, their telecom, their, wa their waste management, so on and so on. And I thought, well, that sounds really interesting. And so I ended up, he ended up introducing me to this cost reduction consultant. And he came and he looked at my business. Now I have an online business. So I, you know, I didn't have things like waste disposal or uh, big telecom, you know, or anything like that. But I, my courses were sold, they are sold online using credit cards. And one of the things that Schooly Mitchell consults to is merchant services. So he came and looked through and he says, oh yeah, we can save you all kinds of money. And it turned out it wasn't insignificant. It was like hundreds of thousands of dollars over a three year period. And I'm like, why haven't I heard about this before? Why hasn't someone told me? Why hasn't my, my CPA or my accountant told me about this? You know, I kind of view that they should be trying to help me save money in addition to the taxes. And, uh, you know, nobody knows about it. And so um, I, I went through the process with this guy. It was so simple, saved me a boatload of money. And I thought, you know, no, I, I need one of these. I need to get into this business. You know, I've got the time. And so here I am, I, I, Schooly Mitchell's a franchise. I bought a Schooly Mitchell franchise and you know, here I am, I'm doing cost reduction consulting and helping businesses save money now. Awesome, I mean, and that's an area that I think you said a, a lot of people don't really hear about is come down the merchant processing. Cause I, I used to work with a company um, that, that managed, um, managed pay, it was a payment processor. And when you see, like, if you're not mindful of it, you know, those fees can add up. And yeah. just the, the the stack of the contract that you get when you sign up with a merchant processor is quite confusing if you're not used to it. So I can definitely see that as an area where a lot of people can save a lot of money if they get a, a you know, smart person like yourself to help them navigate that. You know, people think often, you know, a and I'm guilty of this myself in my own business. We, we call it the weigh it and pay it approach. You get your bill in the mail. You know, does it look kind of in the ballpark of what it typically is? If it is fine, I write the check and I'm done. And I don't think twice about it. Right. And the, the reality is that, you know, we, uh, let me just go over the four areas that mm -hmm. we uh, consult to primarily telecommunications. And that's your, your landline phone, your wireless phone, your internet, your cable, if you have it. Um, uh, merchant services, as we already talked about, which is uh, for someone who might not know another way of saying credit card processing fees. So if you're a merchant and you're accepting payments from your customers, as, you know, credit card payments, you pay a fee for that. And those are called merchant services fees. Um, small package shipping and small package is an industry term, which means up to 150 pounds. So basically anything, if, if you're a small manufacturer, you know, maybe you're shipping your product in a box, um, via V, uh, via FedEx or UPS, you know, they're not going to exceed 150 pounds. That's going to be their limit. Um, so it, anything in that category, if you're shipping up to 150 pounds, we'll look at that because shipping can get expensive as you probably know. And then the last area is waste management or waste disposal. And that could be probably what most people think is, okay, I have a business and an office and there's a dumpster behind the building that we pay for, right? For somebody to come in and dump the dumpster once or twice a week. Yeah, it's that, but it's, a, it's anything that you pay for to get rid of. It could be the shredding, the recycling, it could be human waste. It could be bodies. And, and when I say that, if you're a veterinarian and you, you do euthanization as part of your practice, you have, you know, you have to get rid of the animal bodies. 
um, all the way up to, to hazardous and toxic waste. So anything that you're paying for a third party pay to you know, get them to remove it and deal with it, we'll consult to that. Um, so those are our four key areas that, that we work on. And in all those areas, you know, and we were kind of talking about the merchant services, but there's a lot more behind the curtain, right? The rate that you see, you think, oh yeah, you know, I, I paid a dollar fifty for this phone call that we this long distance phone call, but that dollar fifty can be broken down into a whole bunch of different little components, and that's really where we come in. We know how to break that down, analyze it, see where there might be opportunity for savings. And, and so that's, that's phase one of what we do. It's called optimization. When we work with our clients, optimi we optimize first. We go and we, we look under every stone and try to say, yeah, here's where we can save money. But phase two of what we do is once we do our analysis, we then go in and we also go and talk to the, uh, uh, the vendor, you know, whoever your vendor might be, whether it's Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, Waste Management, LLC, or this credit card processor, um, FedEx or UPS, we go and we negotiate with them. And our, our people, we have a team of 60 plus analysts. You know, these people can speak the language of yeah, UPS and FedEx and Verizon and at and It's not like, you know, me picking up and say, hey, I, I, I want to reduce my rates. Can you help me? <laughs> you know, these people can throw out the right words and they know what to say. And uh, that's the other piece of how we, we, we save our clients money is, um, the negotiation, so optimization and negotiation is what we do at the end of the day. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And so the way we work is when we, when we engage with a client, somebody says, yeah, Hey, we'd love for you to, you know, try and save us some money. We've made it risk-free for our clients. So we don't get paid unless we, we find some savings for our clients. So we go in and we do our analysis and our negotiation. And if we save find some savings for our client, then what we do is we split that savings with them 50-50 mm -hmm. for a three-year period. Then after the three years we've been paid and then all the savings are cruised to the client. Okay. So, you know, our, our proposition is, I mean, we're going to go and we're going to find savings that they wouldn't be able to do on their own because what we do is specialized. Um, so, you know, worst case scenarios, we come in, if we didn't find any savings, which happens occasionally, um, you know, fine, you're not out anything. It didn't cost you a dime and you got the benefit of us doing this analysis for you. But it doesn't in there, um, whether we find savings initially or not, we continue to stay working for our clients for a three-year period. And what we do is every quarter, we go in and we can, we relook at everything and say, you know, things change, right? Um, companies run promotions, their rate structures change, they introduce new plans. Um, billing errors are a big thing. You'd be really surprised how often we find errors that the client would never notice. You know, $50 here or there, or $100 here or there, when you're paying three or 4,000 a month in telecom, you're not gonna catch that, right? Mm -hmm. We look for billing errors as part of our process too, because if an error has been made, we can catch it and go make a claim to the vendor for it and get that money back for our client. Okay. So we do that over the three year period. And, you know, sometimes we'll come in and find some savings. Sometimes we won't, but every quarter thereafter, we're going to continue to look for more ways to save money. And again, we're incentivized to do that because again, anytime we find our client savings, that's how we get paid. So we want to find them savings. And I'll contrast that with the uh, you know, we're not brokers, we're, we're not vendors, we're not trying to sell you anything. Our goal is to save you money by saving you money with whoever, whatever vendors you're with. So our interests are completely aligned with our client. There's no advantage for us to try to swing them one way or the other, you know, hey, switch to this service or that service, because it doesn't matter to us. Whatever, whatever saves our client the most money is, is what matters at the end of the day for us, because, you know, that's how we're getting paid too. So okay. um, it's, it's a great deal. And, you know, everybody should be using a cost reduction consulting firm like ours, because there's, there's no reason not to. In most cases, we're, we're going to be doing something that the company's not doing themselves. They can't do themselves. They don't have the resources, the manpower, the know-how, and we come in and do that for them, basically. Okay, awesome. So if someone is interested in um, reaching out to you, where can they find you online or where can they find you on social media? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my email. Well, uh, our website address is www 
dot schooly mitchell and that's s-c-h-o-o-l-e-y m-i-t-c-h-e-l-l dot com and then uh forward slash s stark so s-s-t-a-r-k and that'll take you to my splash page on our on our company site um and my phone number is 865-444-4873 and my email address is stephen with a v dot stark at schoolymitchell.com. Awesome, awesome. Now, Stephen, before we wrap up, one question that I like to ask every guest that comes on is like, you know, when you think about your experience from, you know, insurance and where to navigating into the courses to now with business optimization and cost savings, you know, what's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Um, as far as, as far as what I do, uh, or well, what I will say is I, I like to leave it open for, for our guests, because you may have a piece of advice specific to what you do, or you may have a piece of advice in general, since you have experience, you know, building something, um, from scratch. So I, I always leave it up to the guests. You can specifically to what you do or just business and ownership in general. I would say as far as entrepreneurship. Um, you, you know, I, I've been self-employed for 15 years now, and I, I can't even imagine having to go back and work <laughs> a nine to five job. I, you know, I, there have been times where I made less money being self-employed than I probably would have been making at a company, but the freedom to call your own shots and build your own business and, you know, be your own boss um, you can't put a price tag on that. And uh, I, like I say, if, if someone said, oh, well, you have to go back and work a regular job and have a boss and work nine to five and, and you know, hope that you get a raise, <laughs> you know, next year, um, I, I couldn't even imagine it. Now, have there been scary times and challenges? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, and that's kind of the fun, you know, of it all is, is working through that. But if someone has, thinks that, gosh, you know, I think I want to work for myself. I say, line your ducks up in a row, do your research and, you know, don't hesitate because time flies and um, every year that goes by is a lost opportunity. So, um, you know, you, you do it, you know, and, and like I say, it can be scary. And, you know, if you're lucky, you have a spouse that has an income <laughs> when you first start, you know, to rely on, but, you know, I didn't, I, I was single, I am single, but I still did it. And, and I don't regret it. I mean, like I say, there's just no, nothing like being your own boss. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on for, you know, telling us a little bit about your background, about Schooly Mitchell, um, and also for all the people in California that are listening that are interested in the insurance industry. Stephen also has some great courses you can look out for. Now, like, on that, where can they find the courses um, if they're interested in that? Yeah. So if you're in California and you are interested in becoming an insurance agent and getting an insurance agency license and need to do an insurance pre-licensing course, uh, the name of the company is Upward Bound Training Solutions. And the website address is www.upward, U-P-W-A-R-D, bound, B-O-U-N-D, training.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Terrell. Thanks for having me and have a great rest of your week, okay? Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the Business Talk Library is the place where business makes sense.